This was me 11 years ago in my studio, apparently too busy for a haircut and at least 30 pounds heavier than I should be. This was the height of busy in my studio. I was booked out months and months in advance, getting paid more and more, working with better bands from further and further away, but there's a dark side that I've never really shared before. Behind the scenes, things started to turn and go downhill. Pretty soon, I started to dread going into the studio at all, and I was so burned out that I was self-sabotaging and eventually pulled a pretty jerk move on a band that I'm not proud of. But before I get to that story, let me back up and tell you a little more about where I was at and what was going wrong. After two years of side hustle and another two years really grinding full-time in the studio, things were starting to hit. You know, some of the local bands I had recorded were getting noticed and blowing up and going on big tours. And since I had spent four years saying yes to every local band I could possibly record, my network was to the point where any rock or metal band within a three hour radius knew about me and my studio. So from about 2010 onwards, I got really busy. And I was in the studio seven days a week, 10 to 12 hours a day. And for a while, this was not a bad thing. I absolutely loved it, but I was kind of blind to the negative side effects of this lifestyle that were slowly starting to add up. You know, I had friendships that were starting to dwindle and I had no outside hobbies either. I mean, how could I? Every waking moment was spent in the studio working on music. And again, I didn't see this as a bad thing, but I started losing my enjoyment of music. I mean, if you're working in the studio for 12 hours every day, the last thing you want to do when you get home is put on a record. I demanded an extremely high level of quality from myself, which is why I was succeeding, but those high standards also meant that I was spending more and more time fixing bad performances or slogging through difficult sessions with musicians that didn't really have the skills. And then my health suffered. Now, I was getting zero exercise, sitting all day long with horrible posture in a cheap office chair, and I was gaining weight, which is not surprising since I was eating fast food every day, twice a day, like pizza, Subway, sometimes pizza from Subway, which is not as bad as it sounds, burgers, fries, Starbucks. I mean, speaking of Starbucks, I was heavily caffeinated. I'd start my day with a big coffee, and then in the afternoon, I'd get a giant iced coffee, sometimes more than once. And this was all bad on my wallet too. Like I was spending a fortune on all of this junk food. And this lifestyle went on for two or three years, and all this stuff was building up, or maybe I should say all of these things were slowly eroding to the point where mentally, physically, creatively, I was just in a downward spiral. And I was living the dream, but it wasn't fun and I wasn't happy doing it. And this eventually led to a breaking point, which is that jerk move that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. So I had just finished producing and mixing a record and I was set to immediately start working on another EP with a band that was driving from six hours away and had booked with me at least four months in advance. And I remember it was only two days before that project was gonna start. And I was at home and I pulled up the pre-pro demos and I just cracked. This was a $7,000 project, the same type of music I'd been cranking out consistently for years. So technically it would have been easy money, but as I sat there listening, all I could think was, I can't do this. Now the idea of going back into the studio and making this EP just felt so heavy, so unbearable that the money was completely irrelevant and I canceled the project with two days notice. Pretty bad move on my part. You know, the manager and the band, they were pretty upset about it with good reason. And I, I regret having done it. It's something I still feel bad about to this day, but I don't see how it could have gone any other way. I had nothing left in the tank. And truthfully, I've been pretty hesitant to share this story because this is what I do. You know, I teach people how to record and mix at a pro level. I show them how to get clients, get paid, and eventually live their dream of going full-time in the studio. And so there's this fear that if I talk about this negative side of things that I'll come across as a hypocrite or something. But at this point, it's pretty clear to me what went wrong. And it's, it's not the recording industry's fault. It's not that the work itself is bad. It's not that this is a bad dream to pursue. I mean, think of it this way. If you love chocolate, but then you eat chocolate all day long, every day, well, then your health is gonna suffer and you'll eventually hate it. I'm really not trying to complain here. It's just that I can look back and know that a lot of these negatives could have been easily avoided. So rather than hide it, I wanna share the lessons I learned so that if and when you start experiencing success in the studio, 
you can avoid the mistakes that turn the dream into a nightmare. Lesson number one, establish regular hours. You know, believe it or not, you don't have to work seven days a week, 12 hours a day to succeed in the studio. And look, I'm all for grinding and hustling at certain stages for limited times, but it's just not something that can be sustained for very long. And after experiencing this burnout myself, I started cutting back on my hours. I started taking Sundays off and I set my studio hours to 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And I was pretty nervous and hesitant to do this, but nobody complained. Besides getting the physical rest that you need, you also need this time away to stay interested in music. You know, you need to listen to records, discover new bands, stay on top of the trends that are happening within the genres you work on. This is gonna keep you fresh and help you generate new ideas and to continue evolving your sound. Lesson number two is to charge more, because if you can charge more, then you'll have margin in your schedule, which means you'll be fresher, you'll get better results, and you'll have an upward spiral. The mistaken belief here is that you just need to get 20% better or 40% better before you can raise your rates. But the flip side of that coin is that you actually need to raise your rates so that you can deliver better projects. Otherwise, you'll be desperate to take any project that comes your way because your rates are so low, which means a lot of wrong fit clients, rushed schedules, and working from an empty tank, which is not how you deliver your best work. Charging more buys you extra time to do the things you need to stay healthy, like exercising, eating decent food, and spending time on other hobbies and with other people. Lesson three, say no to projects that you really don't wanna do, even if it feels like you need the money. Because over time, it is gonna kill your passion. Number four, invest eagerly in tools that save you time and make life easier. Some of my favorite tools that have saved me the most time have been having go-to amps and pedals and guitars and even strings in the studio. The Vocal Line plugin was a huge one that saved me countless amount of hours in vocal editing. And a newer one is the Evertune Guitar Bridges, which, man, if those things existed back then, it would have saved me literally hundreds of hours of tuning during sessions. Lesson five, recruit assistants to help lighten the load. If you're getting busy in the studio, then you need to start outsourcing things like mix prep, drum editing, vocal tuning, maybe even mix revisions or stem delivery. And on the business side, you could hire a virtual assistant to send your quotes and invoices and collect payments and do your scheduling. Basically, any opportunity to buy back your time is how you keep growing your business while staying fresh and still doing your best work. Number six, hang out with other producers and mixers, preferably in person, because being isolated in your own little bubble for too long is not good. You know, you need to get out of that bubble, see what other people are doing, what their workflow is, what they're charging, how they handle their business. And this will give you ideas and show you things that you should be doing. And it can also show you ways that you don't wanna show up. Plus, this is how you find the people who can assist you on projects or collaborate with you. And finally, structure your projects for variety. Now, once you get this whole process down and you can crank out pro-level records like Clockwork, it can get a little bit grueling if you're just doing the same thing day after day. So rather than track guitars for five days straight, I started setting things up so that we could be flexible and maybe one day we're working on guitar tracking and the next day we'll track some bass and then maybe do some vocals. And on bigger projects, it's great to have everything just set up and ready to go so that you can switch it up and things don't get too monotonous. So thankfully, I'm way on the other side of this story now. I still mix. I love the challenge of mixing a great song and getting it out into the world. But at this point, I only take projects that I like and that I actually want to do and I still feel like I'm improving and getting better and better with every mix that I finish, which is rewarding in itself. And I also love teaching up and coming engineers. And what's even more rewarding than completing a successful gig myself is seeing my students transform their mixes, get them sounding competitive and professional and land clients and get paid and even go full time in the studio or release a song that gets a million plays online. The point of this video is just to help you achieve those things without sacrificing the rest of your life. So if I could sum it all up, I would encourage you to take the long view. This is a marathon, it's not a sprint. So be okay with taking some time away from the studio. Be okay with saying no or losing out on projects. More will come. And you need to stop thinking in terms of next week or two months from now and try to think in terms of three, five, 10 or 20 years in the future. Thanks for checking out this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel and check out this video here for the top five lessons that turned me into a pro audio engineer.